Hello there once again, it's Tim, G5TM, and uh, thanks for joining me. And today we are going to look at making a simple DX antenna for 20 metres. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new to the channel, then thanks for stopping by indeed. And uh, if you want to click that subscribe button, or the bell button to be notified of any uh, future videos that'll be fantastic and if you're a regular or maybe not so regular viewer of the channel then thanks for stopping by as well so then maybe you're after a nice simple dx antenna an antenna that would get out some really nice low angles of radiation and get you some nice contacts um, a simple one is the quarter wave vertical the quarter wave verticals in a number of ways traditionally of course they do require radials to work well and you're either looking at ground radials or you're looking at elevated radials. Now, in, at my QTH, I don't have the space for ground radials. I've got a small lawn space where the antenna would go, and uh, that space is for my daughter. <laughs> it's for her to play in and for the family to use. So even though I could put radials down, and it might go under the grass after a while, I've decided to go down the elevated route. Now, the beauty about elevated radials is that basically you don't need to have as many. For ground radials to work well, you need to have, you know, a fair number down. Probably something around the, the region of about, say, 60 to 70 metres worth of radials uh, to, to make it sing fairly well on 20 metres. So, you know, we're looking at around four wavelengths or 16 quarter wavelengths worth of radials. However, if you have elevated uh, radials on a quarter wave vertical, then you can look at using fewer. Um, three or four, maybe even two, might well do the trick. Now, looking at my garden, I don't have the option of using more than two, because I've only got the space at the far end, say far end, <laughs> the furthest end of the garden, if you like, to be able to, to mount the antenna. So I, I'm right up against, almost right up against uh, a garage compound wall, which means I can't go further out because I'm at the far end, the boundary end, and I can't put a radio coming back towards the lawn or towards the house because it has to be pegged down and it means it gets in the way. So literally I have uh, two radials I can use which will basically go, um, they will go uh, north-south uh, like that. So you'll have the vertical element like that and you have two radials coming down like an inverted V like that and that's basically what I'm going to do. So then what do we need to make one of these antennas? Let's have a look. We obviously need wire all right. Now I'm going down the real cheap route here so this is the first time you're going to make one. Uh, maybe you just want to try this out for the first time. Don't go spending lots of money. Go be an old skin flint like me and try to spend the least amount of money as you can. So I've, uh, I've acquired some, as it says on here, light duty speaker cable. It's about 25 uh, gauge, really thin stuff, not thinnish. Of course, the beauty of speaker cable is you've got two wires, so you can easily cut it. These are going to form the radials, and if you cut it, you basically have two equal wires to start with. And in a moment, we'll show you the, the formula as to how to measure for the length of wire that you'll need to start off with. Bearing in mind, you probably need to trim at some stage, okay? So you need to trim in order to tune. And I've also got some nice thin wire as well, which I've acquired from soda beams, I think. Uh, all this is good for 100 watts or, or more, or, or, or a little bit more, so it's not a problem. And I'm using 100 watts. This is quite thin. You can see how thin this is. Look, let me just show you. That is real thin wire. Um, it's nice and lightweight, and that'll be the, uh, the main vertical element, all right? And these will form the two equally uh, equal length radials. And that's basically it. That's the, that's the, uh, the wires. Uh, what I've also got is this little ballon. Now, I got this from a company called Ham Goodies. Hamgoodies.co.uk. I bought three of them. They're £15 each. What's that in dollars? About the same. Um, they're originally fitted with a BNC connector. So I, I put a little adapter for SO239. And I also, they came as well with a couple of... Uh, the small nuts in the end, but I put, I put a couple of wing nuts which will make it easier to you know, remove wires and stuff. You can use this as a one to one current ballon, it's good from 40 meters up to 10, 100 watt rated, so perfectly fine. I've used them loads of times. I've used them to feed a doublet, I've used them to uh, feed a dipole, 
I've used them on a ground mounted vertical and I've used them on elevated uh, quarter wave vertical antennas as well, like the ones we're about to use. So there we are, they work really well, nice and lightweight, about 60 or 70 grams. I uh, wouldn't put it at the very top of the uh, of the of a fiberglass pole. This will be going up about uh, five meters up, and the fiberglass pole I'll be using has already been um, epoxied together the sections, so none of that is going to collapse. And in fact, that pole has been up for nearly two years now and not had any issues, so that's good. So there's the ballon. You also need some uh, paracord, cheap old paracord, just to tie down the radials. Uh, I've got some uh, dipole you know, wire insulators, so you'll have the radial coming onto that side and then on the other side you have the paracord yeah, to tie off, just to isolate it. I've got these from sort of beams, you can use anything, I've used PVC pipes and stuff before, dead easy. As long as it's not conductive, that's great. Uh, another way of doing actually an insulator is to attach a, a two or three um, cable ties together. But I'm using these just to fix the uh, wire onto the uh, the pole. At the very top of the vertical element, I'll be using uh, uh, some really strong insulation tape just to fix the top part of it. I'm going back to the ballon. The way it's going to run, obviously, you're going to have the coax coming down. You're going to have doesn't matter which side really, but I'm going to have the vertical element say going off that one, okay, up there, and off this one you'd have the two rail two radials. So one will go that side and one will come over that side. And uh, that's basically it. I mean, you don't have to have a ballon, you can just basically put the, 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 the shield, you know, the coax to, to the radials and the drivel elements. You'd have the uh, uh, the, the shield going to the radials and the centre conductor to the to the, the vertical uh, part. I'm just using this to ensure I don't get any RF, any common mode coming back. It's just belt and braces, but you can get away without using a ballon. Especially if you're running fairly low power, anything under 100 watts. You'd probably get away with it, but... Uh, it's just belt and braces and just make sure nothing happens. Uh, that's it. And of course I've got the fiberglass pole which I've mentioned as well. So that's all in hand. That's the look at the uh, the, um, the equipment, the things you need, the ingredients for the antenna itself then. So next job now is to put it together and then we'll see how she performs. So next job is to get her, uh, get her constructed. So let's see how we do that. And then let's uh, let's try her out and get her so tuned. How do we calculate how much wire we need? There's two ways of doing it, all depending on whether you're working in feet or whether you're working in, meet in metres, right? So the good old-fashioned amongst us, including our friends in the United States, of course, who still very much follow the imperial route, how do you work out a quarter wave, uh, a correct quarter wavelength antenna for a particular uh, frequency? It's 234 divided by the sort of center frequency of where you're operating. So in my case, it'll be 14.2 megahertz. That gives us a figure, in this case, of about 16, maybe 16 and a half feet. If you're working in meters, it's 75 divided by the frequency. In this case, that gives us, again, using 14.2 megahertz, around 5.28 meters. Now, bearing in mind, those figures are going to be a bit long because you still have something called velocity factor in wire usually about 0.95 or something so it's the wire is electrically in terms of your RF going to be about five percent longer but uh, start off with those figures anyway and you shouldn't go far wrong because in this hobby it's always good when you, when you start designing antennas and having a go at making dipoles and verticals or whatever you're doing always good to have your antenna length a little bit long to start with and don't be afraid just to cut and take your time now to aid you with the tuning process if not straight away, again, if you're new to the hobby, this is. If you haven't got one yet, and you can get one. An antenna analyzer. This is an example of one. It will save you a lot of heartache. Because if your antenna happens to be resonant outside of band, whether it's below or above the band where you want to be, of course, you can't really tell where the resonant point is if you, because you can't keep out of band, can you? You're not allowed to go outside of your designated uh, amateur band. So, uh, one of these, even though it does give out a small amount of RF in order to read the SWR, it's still okay to use. It's completely un it'd be unnoticeable, and uh, you'll be able to tell, tell them, for example, if your 20, meg 20 meter dipole happens to be resonant on 13.6. You can't on your rig, even though it might be opened up. You shouldn't key up anyway there, um, but you can on one of these. And believe me, if you want to avoid headaches, hair loss, and stomach ulcers. Long term, if you're an antenna guy like me, who likes mucking around with antenna designs and trying things out, 
then a, uh, an antenna analyzer is certainly the way to go. Okay, that's enough about uh, antenna lengths and how to work them out then for quarter wave verticals. Uh, one thing before I finish that off, remember if it's a half wave dipole, it's 468, which is double that. Okay, that'll give you the length for a half wave dipole. Anyway, just throw that in there. Right, enough about that. Let's go on to look now about how to. Oops. <laughs> Let's go on to look out now about how to construct the antenna, and then we'll uh, put her up, see if we can tune it, and uh, maybe try and make some contacts. You never know. Back in a bit. Ah, so here's the setup then, uh, with the uh, centre ballon there, and the coax running down. Here it is. Green wire with the vertical element going up. On the right hand side, you'll see the two radials. One will go towards the left and one will go towards the right at an angle of about, or a fairly shallow angle of less than 45 degrees, but it'll be good enough for the purposes of the antenna. And if we back away, there's the vertical element going up. Okay, so here's the antenna itself then. There's the feed point with one radial going down to the right and the other one going down at a slightly steeper angle to the left. Very, very basic antenna. And uh, there's the ballon, the vertical section going up, of course, and the air cell 7 coax coming down from the ballon. Okay, the SWR then. Very nice, isn't it? Look at that. 1.3 to 1 at the bottom of 20 metres. And as we go up, look, down to 1.1. And as we go towards the top, still well within. Uh, acceptable. So uh, a nice SWR sweep. Okay then, the antenna is up, as you've seen. Bit of a lash up job, but that's the whole point, isn't it? How easy is it to get up a nice vertical on 20 metres that'll do a respectable job for DX? What I'll do now, I'll cruise around 20 metres. Uh, you'll just uh, see uh, the close-up of the rig on the, uh, on the camera there, and hear my audio and the radio audio, and let's see if I can work somebody. And do it on, hang on, 10 watts. So let's see if we can do it on 10 watts. Uh, call in, hear some DX, if not, just see what I can hear, work a few stations, and let's prove that this antenna actually can, can work fairly well, either at home or as a portable antenna. Let's see how we get on. The Golf 5 Tango Mic. Uh, Golf 5. Uh, thank you, Golf 5 Tango Mic. Uh, uh, Golf 5 Tango, Golf 5 Tango again. Yeah, Golf 5 Tango Mexico, Golf 5 Tango Mic. Uh, Tango Mike, Tango Mexico, Tokyo Mexico. Yeah, five nine as well. Thanks for the call. Seventy three. Uh, Germany five, Tango Mike. The Tango Mike station, please. Thank you. Golf five, Tango Mike. Golf five, Tango Mike five nine here near Berlin. Thank you. Uh, you're five nine on the south coast of England. Seven three. Thank you. Seventy three. Uh, Germany five. Tango Mike. G five Tango Mike five nine zero eight four. Thank you. Five nine zero zero one. Thank you, sir. Good luck, Romeo Tango two Charlie. U A two Q Sopaji. Well, it's been a tough day on twenty meters. SFI is pretty low today, and uh, not many signals about. Uh, but that antenna up there works really well. It does well on the CQ Worldwide contest, for example, last year. So I know it gets out here very well when the band's open, but uh, the band's struggling today. Nevertheless, we've made three contacts. Just checking my log here uh, into the Czech Republic, uh, Germany and Russia. So uh, not too bad. Um, it's an easy antenna to construct. Uh, as you can see, a little mini ballon, which I've got there, really useful. Uh, I'll put a link down below in the description about uh, where you can find those. Uh, a bit of scrap speaker wire, a bit of other scrap wire, sling it up, jobs are good. And, and uh, you get it in a sort of place where you've got uh, a bit of, a, you know, quite electrically quiet, like uh, down by the sea, which would be really good. Or up on a hill somewhere with a nice clear takeoff. Or at home, if you're blessed with fairly low, low noise, it'll work. I mean, got about an S4 noise floor here today, not bad. Uh, it's quieter, though, on a, di on a dipole. Uh, dipoles were S1 noise floor, so... Verticals are noisier, it's just how it is. Um, but look, all those contacts are made on 10 watts, as you can see, a genuine 10 watts. So for those of you who have uh, just passed or about to take your test for the first time, 
or you maybe are returning to HF after a while, perhaps you're coming back into the hobby, uh, renewing your license after a long gap. Uh, the lockdown has meant that lots of people can do all these sorts of things. It's the one silver lining in that particular cloud, isn't it? Then, uh, hey, consider this. It's a decent antenna. It's very easy to construct. It's going to get you some good, uh, good results. Uh, but obviously, the one thing we're all subject to, unless we're blessed with fantastic antenna systems and lots of power, is that we are subject to the whims of the propagation gods. And they weren't playing ball today. But when they do, that antenna out there will serve you very well. And in fact, at the moment, as, uh, as I make this video in May of 2020, um, 20 metres is staying open pretty late to uh, sort of South America, North America, and to the Caribbean. So um, even with 10 watts, I think this one could do a reasonable job for me. Um, but they're very easy to take portable to, so bear that in mind. Anyway, food for thought. Um, maybe you want to try it out yourself and let me know how you get on with, with your uh, experiences with it too. Uh, this is G5TM, wishing you 73. Uh, stay safe. And above all else, thank you for watching. And uh, oh, click that share and subscribe button as well. Go on, you know you want to. But even if you don't, brilliant. Nice to have you on board and, and have a look at the video. 73 to the next time. Bye bye.